Yes, folks, the Victorian and Tasmanian governments are now in your bedroom, and it looks like New South Wales will soon follow. Both states have introduced new sexual consent laws that are reminiscent of contract law, where the woman has to explicitly say yes to sex, either verbally or through actions. Now, can you imagine being out on a date and having to pull out a consent contract for both parties to sign? Well, that is exactly what will be required under this new law, because the onus is now on men to prove they are innocent, as opposed to being innocent until proven guilty. Have a listen to the ABC on this. New South Wales is a step closer to introducing new sexual consent laws, which would require both parties to actively agree to sexual activity as opposed to just not saying no. The state's Law Reform Commission has made the draft recommendation following similar changes in Tasmania and Victoria. It's being welcomed by women's groups and domestic violence services, but some senior law experts argue the laws will risk jailing people for genuine mistakes. Isabel Rowe reports. After more than a decade of lobbying for change, sexual assault expert Karen Willis says clearer sexual consent laws in New South Wales are overdue. We can't have accused who are just, oh, I thought she was up for it. That I thought she was up for it. Really? Do men actually speak like that? Or is she just trying to brand all men like that? That's just not good enough. Karen Willis is the Chief Executive of Rape and Domestic Violence Services Australia. She represents one of several groups pushing for the introduction of affirmative consent into laws around assault and rape. Which says that in the first instance, just the absence of words is not enough, that there actually must be a, a physical or a verbal, yes, you know, Yahoo, yeah, honey, you're gorgeous, let's go and nothing less. Um, and that consent must be ongoing and can be withdrawn at any time. The New South Wales government government ordered an examination of the state's consent laws last year following the high-profile Luke Lazarus case. Mr Lazarus was found not guilty of sexual assault in King's Cross in 2013, despite a jury and two judges finding that 18-year-old Saxon Mullins had not consented to sex with him. The jury found Mr Lazarus believed the woman had consented. Karen Willis doesn't think that should be enough. Basically relied on, oh, well, she didn't push me away, she didn't say no, she didn't scream, she didn't fight, so therefore I assumed. And I think most of us would accept that that's really not enough to say consent was given. What we've actually recommended is that both parties need to agree through words and or actions. Yeah, so how's a man uh, supposed to prove that without a written contract? That they are consenting to what's going on. That just the absence of no is not good enough. I imagine, though, one of the biggest issues here is that no one usually is around to see what happens in these circumstances. And in court, it's a matter of... He said, she said. So exactly. How how does this help prove the issue in court? Yeah, and look, that that's that's always been one of the many problems with proving complaints of sexual assault. What these changes give is more information to judge and jury. So, what did both parties say, and what did they do? And if there's a difference in view from each side, well, why did you think that, and why did you think that? Don't they already do that? Despite the recommendation of the Law Reform Commission and the majority of submitters, Australian Lawyers Alliance barrister Greg Barnes warns against the concept of affirmative consent. The reality of uh, a lot of sexual assault cases are that you do have, in some cases, people who have an, an honest but mistaken belief as to consent. Uh, and secondly, you have people who you might say are negligent about consent as opposed to people who deliberately assault a person. And the difficulty with the proposed change and the Tasmanian change is that it really equates uh, all situations uh, in the same way. He believes young people, particularly those who combine sex with alcohol and drugs, can get it wrong. It's in effect uh, trying to simplify the law, but in fact will lead and can lead to injustice. Of course it will. Is it not possible to say, though, that keeping the laws as they are is enabling the law to protect the perpetrator rather than trying to yeah. protect the victim? I don't think so. Karen Willis doesn't... <laughs> Did you see how he has cut off just then?
to accept that. We, we actually do quite a lot of training with young men around this and, and what comes back clearly over and over again from them is that, oh, come on, really? You, people know when someone's consenting. And when... Oh, here she goes again, branding all men as evil. And they're not. New South Wales Attorney-General Mark Speakman says he looks forward to reading the Law Reform Commission's draft recommendations. Those recommendations are open to more public submissions before the Commission makes its final report. Anyway, now a bit closer to the truth. OK, change of mood. Are you thinking of getting romantic after the show? This being the kind of show that puts people in the mood. Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, because Victorian Tasmania now have laws that effectively treat a man as guilty of rape until he can prove that he got explicit consent. It's not enough to say that one thing led to another and... The partner seemed willing. You need an explicit yes. Now, this is a law that the New South Wales Law Reform Commission says in a draft report that New South Wales should now have too. It says a person's consent should not be presumed and sexual activity should involve ongoing and mutual communication. Decision-making as well and free and voluntary agreement. So... You need an explicit yes for every single step. Can I do this? Yes. Can I do that? Yes. Can I do that? Yeah, that's absolutely absurd. It's not exactly romantic, is it? Trusting that your partner is OK with the uh, sex because there's no physical or verbal resistance from her does not in itself, says the Commission, mean that there is consent. Now, this follows the high-profile case of Luke Lazarus, who was acquitted of raping 18-year-old Saxon Mullins outside his father's King's Cross nightclub. He said, uh, get on your hands and knees and out your back. And I just did it. At that point, I was kind of, you know, in autopilot a little bit. I just wanted to go. So why didn't you just go? And... This is kind of the quickest way, I thought. Well, you were wrong, and uh, you should have known better. Just do what he says, and then you can go. A jury found Luke Lazarus guilty, but his conviction was quashed on appeal after a judge found that Lazarus might have thought Mullins was consenting. He did not say stop or no. She did not take any physical action to move away from the intercourse or attempted intercourse. Yeah, now I think the, the judge made the right decision there. Joining me is Bettina Arndt, author, trained as a clinical psychologist and a former lecturer on human sexuality. Bettina, it's uh, great to see you again. Um, Bettina, firstly, most couples engage in sex without verbal consent for every step. Now, does that make it an act of rape? It does. I mean, it's most, if these changes went through... And New South Wales law, it would mean that most of the sex most of us have would, would be illegal. And yet it's not good enough, Andrew, to have a, a, a side contract at the beginning of the event. You have to have that consent all the way through, little yelps of approval. Or maybe we can... It can be actually non-verbal um, communication, so I suppose we can wag our tails. <laughs> but the problem is, for the guy, is actually proving he had that consent, and particularly given that we are allowed to change our minds afterwards. Yes, and that's a dangerous one, folks, because women can change their minds later for any number of reasons. Reasons completely unrelated to the actual sex. This is a really bad deal for men, this mm. proposal. Well, um, how do you, under these proposed laws, prove that you really have received explicit consent? Well, that, that's the difficulty. You can't. I mean, this is mm. really shifting the burden of proof. It has r incredibly serious consequences mm. for the way our criminal law operates in this area. Uh, because instead of, instead of assuming that the man is innocent until proven guilty and he, you know... Uh, you know, that's the assumption we, we're currently making, thank goodness, in New South Wales. He would be assumed to be guilty unless he can prove consent. And how does he do that? Mm. This is private behaviour, and there are usually no witnesses around, thank goodness. It's impossible. 
consciousness. Um, so proving consent is an extremely difficult thing. And one of the problems with all of this, this is part of this push towards believe the victim justice, this feminist push to tilt our rape laws to get more convictions. But in the end, juries rebel. I had a, 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 I did a video recently with a mother of an 18-year-old boy, young man, accused of rape. And during that, that court case, it was so obvious this young woman was lying. She had, um, he, she had semen from two other men in her vagina, not the, the accused. And when he was exonerated, when he was found not to be guilty, he walked out of that courtroom and the jury was there applauding him. Uh, which is extraordinary, but I think the juries are getting really fed up with these repeated attempts to tilt our justice system to favour women at the expense of men. Exactly. Yes, this law is bad. But, yeah, now I understand that it must be very traumatising for a woman who has been genuinely raped and then have to face her rapist in a court and have to prove that he raped her. But moving the goalposts to favour women is not the answer. I would say the answer is really about encouraging young women to be more responsible. In other words, don't sleep with guys until you really know them. There are some really bad guys out there.